Welcome to section 3 of Fungi. This is our Fungi Overview figure. In this video, we'll be discussing Coccidioides imitis, which you can see right here. This scene will take place on a shooting range out in the desert. As you can see, this person is cocking the gun, and a bullet has just left the chamber. The word cock sounds like Coccidioides, so the cocking motion front and center should help you remember that this image is all about Coccidioides imitis. If you look closely at the gun, you can see that it has a picture of the southwestern United States on it. It also has the inscription AZ, as in Arizona. This person is shooting in the desert, and it appears that they're from the southwest. So these two ideas should help you remember that Coccidioides imitis is endemic to the southwestern United States. So for example, this fungus may be present in a patient who lives in Utah or Arizona. Now you can see that we've added some balloons to the scene. I guess this person is shooting official targets and balloons. Anyway, the clear balloon has a butterfly on it. And just like in the last videos, this is here to help you remember that Coccidioides is a dimorphic fungus. We've also shown the butterfly on a spherical shaped balloon, which is to make you think of spherules. So Coccidioides is a dimorphic fungus, and it's unique because it has a spherule form at warm temperatures rather than a yeast form. So remember, most fungi are mold in the cold and yeast in the heat, but Coccidioides is a mold in the cold and a spherule in the heat. Now we've shown one of the balloons popping with confetti flying all over the place. The confetti can be thought of as a symbol for the endospores within the spherule, just like the confetti is inside of the spherical shaped balloon. Also note that the spherical shaped clear balloon is much larger than the red balloon, which is our symbol for a red blood cell. So putting these ideas together should help you remember that the spherules of coccidioides are much larger than red blood cells and are filled with endospores. This is an image of an endospore of coccidioides imitis. The spherule is right here. Also notice that it's filled with little circular shaped endospores. Okay, notice that we've made the bullet coming out of the chamber of the gun silver. This prominent silver bullet should help you remember this silver stain and that coccidioides imitis can be identified using a silver stain. This is an image of coccidioides using the methanamine silver stain. You can see some of the spherules rupturing and releasing endospores, for example, right here. Now we've shown the bullets impacting against the dirt causing a bunch of dust to rise into the air. This dust should help you remember that transmission occurs via inhalation of spores that are released from the soil. For example, this could happen during an earthquake or during an archeological excavation. Next, pay close attention to the traditional target. We've included this here to help you remember that coccidioides can cause erythema multiforme, which is characterized by target-like lesions. This is an image of erythema multiforme affecting an infant. As you can see, the rash results in erythematous target-like lesions. HSV and mycoplasma pneumonia can also cause this, as well as certain drugs, such as beta-lactams. Now we've added a granny to the image. She came to watch her son at the target range, but it looks like she's pretty oblivious to the fact that she's extremely close to getting accidentally shot. She should probably move away from downrange, right? Anyway, the dust that was kicked up in the air by the bullets is causing her to cough. And this cough is here to help you remember that coccidioides can cause pneumonia. The granny is our recurring symbol for granuloma formation. So she's also here to help you remember that coccidioides is associated with granuloma formation. Finally, notice that her elbows are red and that she's holding one of them. Maybe she accidentally took a BB or a small fragment of a bullet to the elbow. In any case, we've shown her this way to help you remember that coccidioides can also cause arthralgias. All right, now if we look on the ground surrounding the grandma, notice that there are several red bumps. These are remnants of prior balloon targets and they resemble erythema nodosum, which are red tender bumps that occur under the skin. This is here to help you remember that coccidioides can cause erythema nodosum, which is also known as desert bumps. This is an image of erythema nodosum. As you can see, this patient has erythematous lesions on the leg, and this can be associated with a coccidioides infection. Now we've added another bystander in a hammock. The hammock kind of looks like a stretcher, and is here to help you remember that this part of the image is about immunocompromised patients who develop a coccidioides infection. Also, the confetti can be thought of as a symbol for the pathogen. So the fact that it's flying all over the place and disseminating over to this guy in the stretcher should help you remember that this part of the image is about disseminated disease. Let's zoom up on him so you can see this better. Notice that this guy is eating a chicken drum and you can see the skin hanging off as well as the bone. So this, along with the stretcher idea, should help you remember that coccidioides can disseminate to the skin and bone in immunocompromised individuals. The hat is our recurring symbol for meningitis. So this is here to help you remember that coccidioides imitis can cause meningitis in immunocompromised individuals. All of that confetti above that's landing on his hat should help reinforce the idea that this occurs in immunocompromised patients. If we turn our attention back to the grandma, 
Notice that she's wearing a shawl with the letter A on it, which is our symbol for azole medications. So this is here to help you remember that local infections should be treated with azole medications, such as fluconazole or itraconazole. Finally, if we zoom back out, notice that we've added a desert-looking frog underneath a hammock. This is here to help you remember that amphotericin B should be used to treat disseminated infections. All right, now that we've covered the image, let's review with a question. A 33-year-old female presents to her physician due to shortness of breath, chest pain, and a cough that has steadily worsened over the past week. Her temperature is 38.7 degrees Celsius, or 101.7 degrees Fahrenheit. Physical examination reveals crackles at the base of the lungs bilaterally. A pathological specimen is obtained and shown below. Based on the information above, where does this patient most likely live? A. Ohio B. Michigan C. Nevada or D. Brazil Okay, from the question stem, hopefully you notice that this patient is presenting with pneumonia. So she has shortness of breath, chest pain, a cough, a fever of 38.7 degrees Celsius, and crackles heard on examination. The differential diagnosis with this information is quite broad, but the pathological specimen reveals a spherule, which you can see right here. With this information, we know we're dealing with a coccidioides imidis infection, so the correct answer is C, Nevada. From the image, recall that the large spherical-shaped balloon with confetti right here is here to help you remember that spherules are unique to coccidioides imitis. Also, the southwest region shown on the gun right here should help you remember that coccidioides is endemic to the southwestern United States. So this would be common, for example, in Nevada. A, B, and D e are incorrect because none of the pathogens associated with these regions would reveal a spherule on a pathological specimen. A is the endemic location of histoplasmosis, B is the endemic location of blastomycosis, and D is the location of paracoccidioidomycosis. So again, the correct answer is C, Nevada. And with that, we've covered everything you need to know about coccidioides imitis.